Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Glad to see you here in the house of the Lord. It is good to be here on this day. A special welcome for visiting with us. We are glad you're here with us on this day. So you can see I'm by myself today. Pastor Eccles is out of town. So we pray God's blessings on his travels that he would be back here safely with us soon. A few announcements before we begin our worship. Just a reminder that the Lutheran Women's Missionary League has their collection that ends tomorrow for sunglasses, eyeglasses, and baby care items. Uh, They will be collecting those and taking them with them later this week as they go to the LWML National Convention in Lexington, Kentucky later this week. So we'll also be praying for uh, later this morning for the four individuals who will be representing St. Paul's who are going we have Barb Luterman, Carol Grimm, Glacey Splittorf, and Becky Kachanik will be attending that convention later this week. So we'll be praying for them and safe travels as they'll be headed out to Lexington later this week. A huge thank you to all those who helped with VBS yesterday. We are so glad that that was a, a, such a great success. And uh, thank you to all those who came, who helped, who did anything to, for that VBS of God's Wonder Lab. Uh, So we also give a special thank you to those who were leading VBS this year, Greg and Carla Carlisle, and also Kara Todd and Crystal DeLay. So if you see them, I wish them a special thank you. Give them a special thank you for all that they have done for VBS this year. Also, you are invited later today, Peace Lutheran in Owensboro will have their ordination and installation for candidate Adam Sternquist, who has been called into the Holy Ministry and called to be the pastor at Peace Lutheran in Owensboro. That will take place at 3 p.m. this afternoon. So once again, Peace Lutheran in Owensboro, the ordination and installation of candidate Adam Sternquist, who is a graduate of Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, will be ordained and installed at Peace later today at 3 p.m. Our order of service for this day is as printed in our bulletin. We ask God's blessings on our worship, and we begin with the Ring of the Bells.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent to them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by the virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he, their he made the storm be still. And the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad that the waters were quiet. And he brought them to their desire Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love. For his to the Let them extol him in the congregation of the people. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them from their distress. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now. to God on high.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your mercy, guide the course of this world so that your church may joyfully serve you in godly peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, is from Job chapter 38. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Dress for action like a man. I will question you, and you make it known to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurement? Surely you know. Or who stretched a line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling ban, and prescribed limits for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Working together with him. Then we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In a favorable time I listen to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way by great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God with weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying, and behold, we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted in your own affections. In return, I speak as to children. Widen your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher! 
Do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke. And he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace! Be still! And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this? And even wind and the sea obey him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess together our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
Please bow your heads and pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father above, who gives us every good and perfect gift. Amen. Back in college, I was part of the traveling choral ensemble. It's called Kammerchor, a chamber choir in German. And we mostly sang music from classic composers, some maybe a few modern sacred pieces. And then every once in a while, our director would throw in a spiritual song for us to sing to broaden our repertoire. One of those songs which seemed to keep coming back almost year after year was the spiritual called, I Got Shoes. And the words were inspired from an African-American spiritual centered on fixing one's eyes to things of eternal worth and not what was taking place here on earth. The words were, I got shoes, you got shoes, all of God's children got shoes. But when I get to heaven, I'm going to put on my shoes and I'm going to walk all over God's heaven. All of God's children got shoes. You and I, we have shoes. For all of us who believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, we have the faith in knowing how this life is going to end and what's going to happen in the life and in the world to come. We have shoes. We have faith. We have life in Christ Jesus our Lord. But sadly, how often we forget this simple and eternal truth. We get so wrapped up in the temporal. We get so caught up in the moment that we, we have, we forget what we have, we forget who we have with us. It's just a mere afterthought. The sufferings and trials of this world, they overtake us. We forget we have a hope and that hope will not disappoint. We look to all other means and sources to calm our fears when what is really needed is already in our possession. For we've got shoes. We got faith. The disciples give an example of having what is needed, but forgetting its purpose and that they possess it in our gospel reading for this morning. Jesus had just finished teaching the crowds using parables. It's now evening. Jesus seeks a time to go and to be with his disciples, to go get some rest and recharge because he was looking to go back out and keep proclaiming the kingdom of God. So Jesus and his disciples set sail on the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus is there in the boat with his disciples. He's resting fast asleep there in the stern of the boat when a windstorm arose. And this was not uncommon for this area, for the sea, with its location of how it was compared to the mountains. The windstorm was not anything out of the ordinary. But this windstorm still, it freaked out the disciples. They were afraid for their lives. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to do because everything was out of their control. So they go to Jesus. They go, they wake him up. They go and shake him, say, Teacher, do you not care? We are perishing. Look around you. Look what's happening. And right there we see how the temporal knocked out the eternal. They believe Jesus didn't care about them. They believed Jesus wasn't going to see them through this. They thought the things of this world were bigger than what even Jesus could handle. They thought they had no hope, where really they had all the hope that they needed. See, they had already forgotten that last parable that Mark recorded before this event, the parable of the mustard seed. How that small little mustard seed, that small little seed of faith, would become the largest of all the garden plants. That seed, even though it was so small, would grow into being something great. How faith would continue to grow, how faith continues to produce, how faith continues to give us assurance. They forgot about that because the temporal had taken over the eternal. Jesus looked around to see that they were being overcome by fear. And so Jesus speaks. But notice in our gospel reading for today who Jesus speaks to, or actually what Jesus speaks to. Jesus does not first speak to his disciples. Jesus looks around at the wind. He looks at the waves, and he actually speaks to them first. 
Jesus says, peace, be still. And at that moment, the wind ceased. The waves were calm. That moment, Jesus showed his disciples not even not even the wind or the waves, nothing in this world can take away what they have in their possession and who was in their midst. Nothing, nothing in this world could ever match the power or the magnitude of who Jesus is as the very Son of God, as the Savior of the world, your Savior and mine. Nothing can match that. Jesus is greater. He is greater than any suffering, any trial that we experience in this world. Jesus is greater. Jesus is greater than any calamity, any catastrophe that could ever take place in this world. Jesus is greater. And the good news is, just as the disciples have Jesus in their midst, so do we. The good news is Jesus is here with us now. He is here in this place. He is here where the word of God is proclaimed. He is here where the sacraments are administered. He is here and we still have Jesus. We have Jesus with us proclaimed. We have Jesus here as we go and we leave here. As we go back into our homes, as we go into our places of work, we go wherever we may be, we still have Jesus with us. But when we leave here, we still have the grace that He poured out upon us in holy baptism. We still have the Holy Spirit who is with us, who is that mark and that guarantee that Jesus will never leave or forsake us. He continues to give that faith that is instilled. He continues to stir it up and to let us know that we have exactly what we need. We have Jesus. We have Jesus. What more do we need? It is then after the wind stops and the waves were calmed. Jesus poses this line of questioning to his own disciples. Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Jesus was asking them why were the things of this world concerning them so much? Why were they being consumed with how things would go and how they would turn out, even though they were all out of their control? Why let the temple overwhelm you when your focus should be on that which is eternal? This is what Jesus wanted his disciples to learn, and this is what Jesus also tells us this morning. Do not be overwhelmed by this world. Do not be overwhelmed by the temple that you cannot change but know what you have in your possession. Know that you have Jesus. Earlier I mentioned that spiritual, that song about I got shoes. Back a couple hundred years ago, that was a big thing, having a pair of shoes. It was a big deal. But now today, we as Americans, shoes have become a multi million dollar, billion dollar industry. Shoes have become commonplace. We all just have shoes and think really nothing of it that much. Surveys and studies have even shown that Americans love their shoes. And on their own, the average between somewhere, want to take a guess on how many shoes and don't say, say a lot. We do. We do own a lot of shoes. The average American owns between 12 and 19 pairs of shoes. Women own an average of 27. But I'm just saying. Let's think about that. Each American owns 12 to 19 pairs of shoes. We have shoes for every occasion. We have shoes for every activity. But what's really been taken for granted is that we have shoes to begin with. And so it is with our eternal salvation in Jesus. We take for granted we have something eternal and we turn our focus to the temporal. But we have something that will last, that will outlast this world, that will outlast it all. We have salvation in Jesus Christ. This is what lasts. This is what's eternal. This is our focus. 
The disciples' reaction to what Jesus did, it shows they didn't want to take for granted what he had to give for them. For what he had to provide could be only provided by him. We hear how the disciples were, they were filled with great fear for they knew what Jesus had to give to them. It would see them through this life and into the world to come. They knew what they had was something that could not be replaced. They didn't want to let it go. They didn't want to let it be because Jesus and what he has and what he gives, it's one of a kind. And their fear was the fear that they didn't want him to leave them. For unlike the things of this world, which are here today and gone tomorrow, they had Jesus, who is with them always. We have Jesus, who is with us always. We have his word, which is always there, reminding us of that eternal truth of the love of the Father, the love that the Heavenly Father has for us, his dear children. The Father loves us so much that he sent his one and only Son into this world to be condemned by us, to suffer by our hands, to die on a cross for our sins. For we have the Heavenly Father who sent forth Jesus to be our Savior. Let us not take that for granted. Let us not try to make it out to something that it isn't. Instead, we take it for what it's worth, eternal glory from temporal suffering. It is the eternal truth which will remain apart from this temporal world of pain, of grief, and anguish. St. Paul writes it best to that church in Corinth in the epistle reading for today. It's as having nothing and yet it is possessing everything. That is what it means to have Jesus. And that is what we have. Others don't know how good we have it. For nothing in this world can replace Jesus. Nothing in this world can take Jesus away from us. Because the greatest fear the disciples had will not happen. Jesus will not forsake us. Jesus will not leave us. He will never leave us. We fast forward to the end of Jesus' time here on earth before he ascended back into that heavenly kingdom, before he ascended back into that throne. What were Jesus' last words to his disciples? Lo, behold, I am with you always. To the very end of the age, I am with you no matter what happens to you, no matter what goes on in this world, let it be known of this. I am with you, says our Lord. I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Jesus is with us always in this world and in this life. And he has prepared something pretty spectacular in the life and in the world to come. See, in the song, I Got Shoes, the song doesn't end with just shoes. It actually goes further. It lets it be known that you've got a robe, you've got wings, you've got a harp, you've got a song, you've got it all. You've got it all. Because that's what God has provided for you. He has provided everything you need for your eternal well-being. He's provided everything you need for that eternal dwelling which he has prepared. He has gone before to prepare for you that room. He has gone to prepare you that place. He has gone to prepare for you everything that you need in this world and in the life to come. And if he's gone and prepared that for you, he's going to take you to be with him forever. Because what we have now is nothing compared to what Jesus will give us in heaven. It's nothing to be compared to at that last day when Jesus will raise us at the time of the resurrection of the dead to be with him forever. For what we have now, what we have forever is Jesus. He will see us through this life. He will see us in the world to come. For we always will, we always have Jesus. That's what we have. That's who we cling to. 
It's who we stand in. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now the peace that passes our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds focusing in this temporal world on that which is eternal, the love of Jesus Christ, the love that he has shown for us, the love that he continues to give to us in this life and in the one to come. Thanks be to God. We have peace in Christ. Amen. We join together in singing the offertory. Please stand. We join our hearts and minds together in prayer. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wondrous works to the children of men. You hold power over wind and wave and over sin and death. Deliver the people of St. Paul's, especially Eric, Michelle, Blake, Bryce, Jax, and Jaden D'Souza, Adam Diekman, and Andrew Diekman, from every trouble and distress, and bring us at last to our eternal haven. Lord, in your mercy, God of our salvation, you have ushered in the favorable time and the day of salvation through the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Support all your ministers and remove all obstacles from hearing and believing the word that they preach. Let your grace be proclaimed through every hardship, struggle, and suffering as you give comfort to our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted throughout the world. Encourage us by the example of many saints to consider ourselves rich and alive despite every opposition. For since we have Christ, we possess everything. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, open wide the hearts of Christians to one another, especially within the home and between neighbor. Let love be genuine, speech be truthful, and patience constant. We thank you for the love of husbands and wives that they share with one another, and for those especially who are celebrating wedding anniversaries this week. For Bill and Karen Kirsch, Kyle and Erica Miller, Matt and Sarah Miller, John and Jessica West, David and Jamie Elkins, Mark and Alice Merrill, and Gary and Marjorie Baggett. We also thank you on this day for the gift of fathers, especially you as our Heavenly Father. Let us commend ourselves in everything as those known by God's love and therefore unashamed to serve one another. Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks, O oh God, that through baptism you have made us all brothers and sisters in Christ. In this community of faith, we have heard your loving word for us and for all of creation. We have been fed and forgiven at your holy table, and we have been called to be witnesses to your gospel to all those you place in our lives. We pray now that you would grant your peace to all those attending the 2021 LWML Convention in Lexington, Kentucky in the days ahead. Grant safety and protection to the sisters of our congregation who will be attending the convention. Barb Luderman, Carol Grimm, Glacey Splittorf, and Becky Kachanik. Guide them by your word. Renew them by your spirit. Protect them as they travel, make their way safe, and their homecoming joyful. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you rule this world by your power. Give to your civil servants respect and recognition of your creation and its nature. When they use the authority given to them from above, let it be in accord with your good design for our world and not the corruption of sin, which they are to rebuke for the good of their citizens. 
Hear us also on behalf of the request for the food pantry recipients who are requesting your guidance and your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, you see that we are perishing, yet you bid us to set our fears aside and trust in you for the sake of Christ, by whose blood we have received peace for our troubled consciences. Do not reject our prayers for their faithlessness, but teach us to trust in you fully. Give your protection and peace to those in need, especially to Vernon Wells, Nancy Eikenberry, Hudson Holler, Nick Sawyer, Cindy Westfall, Gary Burke, Will Heachman, Jeff Kachanik, Becky Kachanik, Joanne Causey, Bob Fender, Sue Travis, the Reuter family, Nora Hancock, and Benny Hoffman. Lord, in your mercy, Holy Lord, you know all of our days and are with us when we pass from this world of suffering and pain. Be with those who grieve this day, especially be with Tim Horst and family after the death of his mother, Leora Horst. Grant them and all others who grieve the peace that only you can give, the hope and the comfort of the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and whatever else you would have us ask of you, O God, Grant us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.